same given a sequence of instruction how to identify which all are the possible data hazards which all are the possible types and the number of data hazards for that for each instruction we can define a read set or domain which consists of the registers from which that instruction read the data from Similarly, for each instruction, we can define a write set or range which consists of the registers to which the data is written to by that instruction. Here, add instruction read data from R0 and R1. Similarly, the mul instruction read set contain R2 and R5. Here it is R3 and R6. Here it is R5 and R4. Here we read data from R6 and store it to the memory location X. And so we read data from R6. Similarly, the write set contain here it is R5, R6, then R5, R6. And here there is no register to which the data is written to. Having defined the read set and the write set, now how to identify which all are the possible read after write data hazard. A read after write data hazard occurs when we are expected to read some data after a write. Here we are reading from the register R2. Is there any prior write to R2? No. Here we are reading from R5. Is there any prior write to R5? Yes. So here we have a data flow from this instruction to this instruction. The program expects to read data from the register R5 by the multiplication instruction only after the data is written to register R5 by this add instruction. Similarly, we read from R3. Is there any prior write to it? No. Here we read from R6. There is one prior write to R6. We read from R5 and here there are two prior writes to R5 but we expect to data, read data from the register R5 which is written by the sub instruction. So the data flows from the sub instruction to the div instruction. And here we read R4, no prior write. We read R6, there are two prior writes to R6 but we are expected to read the data written by the div instruction. So these are the possible read after write data hazards with this sequence of instructions. In all these four cases, if we try to execute this read operation before this write operation, then a read after write data hazard will occur. Similarly, to find the write after read data hazard, a write after read data hazard occur when we are expected to perform a write after a read. Here we write to, uh, to the register R6. Is there any prior read? No. Here we are writing to R5 and there is one prior read. Thus according to program order, we should write to R5 only after the data is read from R5 by the multiplication instruction. Now here we have R6 to which data is written to. Is there any prior read? Yes. So we are expected to write to R6 by the do instruction only after data is read from this R6 by the sub instruction. Hence there are two possible write after read data hazard. By some reasons if we perform this write before this read then this instruction will read a wrong value and by some reason if we perform this write before this read this instruction will also read a wrong value. Now we show all the possible cases of write after write data hazard. A write after write data hazard occur if we are expected to write some data after a write. And by some reasons, if it happens in the other order, so here we are writing to R6. Is there any prior write to it? No. Here we are writing to R5. Is there any prior write to R5? Yes. So by some reasons, if it happens in the other order, if this instruction write to R5 first, then this instruction will read a wrong value from R5. Now here we have a write to R6. Is there any prior write to it? Yes. So this also if it doesn't happen in the same order, this instruction, the sub instruction will read a wrong value from R6.
So the number of possible right after right hazards is equal to 2. Hence all these are the possible data hazards with the sequence of instructions. It doesn't mean that all these hazards will occur with the sequence of instructions. By some reasons, if this order is not maintained, then there is a possibility of these data hazards.